Good afternoon, everybody. Uneducated Economist here. Thought I'd talk a little bit about the housing market again today. Now, I know how much you guys like it when I talk about the housing market. And for those of you who don't know, I work in the building supply industry. I have my fingers on the pulse of the industry, and I pay attention to what's going on in the futures market, what's happening with uh, framing materials, and I report on that at least once a week. Now, yesterday we saw the March contracts close for lumber futures and they closed at 1040 per thousand this is incredible we are definitely going to see higher retail prices coming into the next month or so the may contracts because lumber futures go in two month increments so the may contract however i saw was down at 840 per thousand there was quite a bit of a drop in that one but the closer we get to the closing of that contract it's going to say a little bit more about where we're going to be in the in the price of lumber but as of the next few weeks and coming into the, probably at least the next month or so, we are going to see higher prices. And I know it's such a concern that the prices are moving so fast that our vent, one of our vendors that I use to purchase lumber with, who normally sends me a price list once a week, is now sending us two price lists a week. One on Friday, another one on Wednesday. And that is scary to me considering that, you know, if you cannot honor those prices for even a week, that means you're anticipating that the prices are going to even move up even higher as if they're not already astronomically high. Now, one of the things that I saw was the home builders uh, sentiment. The, the home builders confidence in where they are right now has dropped a little bit. Now, granted, they have it on a number scale and anything above 50 is confident. Anything below 50 is not confident. And right now they're sitting at like 78. So there's a lot of confidence happening inside of the home builders sentiment however it has dropped down it was at like 90 at one point and it dropped down two points just recently here it was like went from 80 to 78 so you can already see the home builders are not feeling as good about things as they once were now personally i see a lot of homes still in in the project phase like people are wanting to build homes there's a lot of new um, prints coming in as far as getting quotes on on uh, house packages there's no slowdown people are wanting to build homes the homes are selling the retail end of things people's like projects for doing like raised beds or you know maybe like you know just some small projects around the house those things seem to have been dropping off dramatically i do not have nearly as many people asking me about you know decks and fences and stuff like that but the new construction home market seems to really be doing well right now in fact, I was talking with the lead salesman about um, about you know this whole situation. He said he just gave a bid for the framing portion of an 11,000 square foot house, and it blew me away. I've never heard of anything like this. It's a huge house, like most houses, you know, are two to three thousand square feet. A 11,000 square foot house is just immense, and this thing is like full on custom. But the lumber, this the framing portion of this of this package came to $260,000. $16,000 of that was just hardware. Holy moly. I remember when I was a kid in high school putting together house packages. That's when you put all the lumber on a truck and you send it out. That like wall pack would be somewhere around five, dollars $6,000. Most of the framing for building a house would be on that package. This 11,000 square foot framing package was close to or over a quarter million dollars i i was so shocked by that i had a hard time even wrapping my mind around the idea of it but uh that's what seems to be taking place right now and yeah like i said there doesn't seem to be any slowdown um we're gonna find out a little bit closer or you know where retail prices are gonna go with the uh lumber the closer we get to that may contract but as of right now there doesn't seem to be any reversal i see the prices only going up from here at least for for you know the short term uh the other day though i wanted to talk about a letter here that or an email that i got the other day i did a video talking about the options that people are going to have once the four forbearance ends and a lot of people are under the impression that they'll just be able to just tack the you know the missed loans or missed payments that they had at the end of the loan and no harm no foul we'll just make them make the payments then and I don't believe that it was going to go down as easy as that and I put out a video talking about the different options that people would have when it comes to this forbearance and uh actually I put a 
put a question out there or, you know, a statement out there for anybody who is in the industry to please contact me and let me know, you know, what the truth is about this, you know, about what people are going to experience with their forbearance ending and what their options truly would be. And uh, so I got this email. Now, the person who sent it to me wants to remain anonymous, including like the place where they work. So I just want to say that they work for a major mortgage corporation. And I'm just going to leave it at that. And I'm just going to read you the letter here because I think it's it's pretty telling on, on what we can expect coming from this forbearance. But anyway, it goes like this. It says, hi, first, I would like to congratulate you on your YouTube channel. You give the public an insight we would otherwise not have. And for that, I am truly appreciative. My son, who studied economics at, we'll just say a university, introduced me and his friends to your channel. A bit more, more about me. I currently work at this major mortgage corporation and audit banks and servicers in regards to the mortgages, delinquencies, and modifications, etc. I am very private and do not have any social media. You are welcome to use the information below, but please do not provide my name or information on my background. In regards to ending of forbearance, you are very close and right on the money with your video. I will leave a link down in the description for that video too. You had all the options, but were missing the logistics on the third option, which was the lengthening of the loan. This is what they have to say. Modification loans are extended to 40 years with current low interest rates published by Fannie and Freddie. These options is only available if the hardship has been resolved and the borrower is able to resume making their mortgage payments. First, the servicer discusses reinstatement of the re in, sorry. <laughs> First, the servicer discusses reinstatement and repayment options. If those are not feasible, then the modification is offered and that option is available only if the borrower has a lower monthly payment. Loan is extended to 40 years and the missing payments are added to the back of the loan or back of the note as a balloon payment. The hierarchy for delinquencies are as follow. Number one, COVID-19 payment deferral, which is about to end. Number two, flex modification, the extended to 40 years. Number three, standard short sale. Number four, standard deed in lieu of foreclosure. A small correction regarding refinancing. Borrowers who were, are, delinquent on their loans are not able to refinance. Refinancing requires a hard pull of their credit and borrowers must pay closing costs. Not only is the loan delinquent, but they have to but they have not paid their mortgage. Chances are they do not have the money to pay the closing costs. Hope this helps. Warm regards. Thank you so much. Yes, that does help quite a bit because there was a lot of questions on what was going to happen with they were to lengthen the loan. And to hear that they're going to extend it out to 40 years and then put the the missed payments as a balloon payment at the back of the note. So that if I got that right, that means that after you are done making the payments, all those missed payments that were put at the back, you owe that in one big balloon payment. So like if you missed a year's worth of payments, you owe a year's worth of payments at the very end in one shot, which I guess if you have 40 years to save up for, it shouldn't be that big of a deal. But that's kind of what I see coming from that. And then I also have to wonder is if that's put at the back of the loan, is there interest occurred on that that entire time? Very interesting, but thank you very much because I think that is very helpful for a lot of us who have been questioning what the lengthening of the loan was going to be like, and I think that's probably going to help uh, clear up a lot of the uh, questions that people had. So very much appreciate you sending me that email, and um, uneducated economist, you guys let me know.